back up and kind of to the beginning of the mass success that the Bengals had a few years ago, right after the release of Different Light, where the um, you know we had the Manic Monday and, and Walk Like an Egyptian. Were you guys prepared for that kind of success? The way that it, I mean, it hit kind of fast, even though that was your second album. Yeah, we were sort of stunned actually. It hit us so fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a two by four. I know, then about a year and a half later, we're like, wow, this is really happening, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it kind of catches you like a big wave, you know, and you got to surf that, you got to surf that wave. Surf the wave. What was the most vivid <laughs> memory of that time, that particular time, and especially after the songs, like, like uh, Walk Like an Egyptian hit number one? There was something surreal about it. I remember at one point we were um, doing a, sort of a press tour slash, you know, concert tour of um, Europe, and remember when we were in San Remo? Yeah. With Duran oh, Duran, which is why it's all yeah. coming to me now. <laughs> and it was right when Walk Like an Egyptian was number one. And we were just so used to doing these, you know, we, we had done many, many, many tours up, it, up before that. So it really wasn't an overnight success by any means. But there was one point where we did, like, a real press conference, <laughs> oh, like right. they really have. And there was just a sea of photographers I'm flashing. Yeah. Shouting yeah. At and us we were Italian just, and it, was sh it was surreal. It was like. It was almost like it wasn't really happening. We Remember just the dinner with Duran Duran? Yeah. We had the dinner with Duran Duran, and the fans were sort of beating on the and windows. And they were screaming right. out, like, wow. I love you, John. <laughs> I love you, Simon. And, and they were climbing the on the car, car that we that we were Remember riding Remember walking to the car, and they were, like, grabbing at us we and stuff? Because they were gra grabbing at them, actually. But we were <laughs> there in the way, you know. They all wanted us. Very strange. They all wanted John. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What kind of, is, is there a detriment to that kind of success, that kind of intense success? Well, it's At completely all? surreal because mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, it, there's nothing reality-based about it at all. It's like the day before you were the same person, and suddenly everybody's acting kind of you funny. You're actually kind of funny. You're walking down the street, people are looking at you it's funny. Like, you're like, oh, why are they looking at me like <laughs> that? It made you uncomfortable to you be recognized? Thinking, well, you start thinking about things like you're going to the, you're going to go get some milk in the middle of the night. You're going to go to 7-Eleven or something, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, my God, I look. Uh, <laughs> someone's going to see me and go, hey, that's a girl from the Bengals. I saw her yesterday. She looked really weird. <laughs> yeah, and, and you start thinking these ridiculous thoughts. You still go and get the milk, and you look terrible and you, whatever, so but you still. Advocate your, you have your to right to thought. go to 7-Eleven. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> can't do it it's very silly. Um, we'll send our people. <laughs> <laughs> My people go get me milk. Uh, let me flash forward a little bit here to like to 88, 89 after the release of everything. Again, another number one single with Eternal Flame. Um, and right after that, I believe you guys decided to you switched management. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, mm -hmm. Right before, I believe. Right before we released the record. We right were at the end of, I guess, We were mixing, yeah. In yeah. yeah. I think so. What was going on there? Why, why were the management switch at that point when things where the momentum was still was going so well? Well, it was, it was sort of complicated, um, the relationship between artists and management, very complicated. And uh, we actually had begun our lives um, as bangles with Miles Copeland and mm -hmm. and had a good relationship with him but he was sort of an absentee manager mm -hmm. and we had had this problem with him all along and and uh, actually at one point earlier had had not severed relationships but had had told him we weren't happy and he sort of wooed us back and so we got again to this point where we're realizing no we really need something um, you know more that feels more supportive something that feels a little more present for us and we you know put ourselves in a very vulnerable position mm -hmm. realizing of course that we were doing that because we were just about to release a record we were rehearsing for a huge tour and auditioning managers <laughs> during <laughs> rehearsals right. which is completely what wacky. were we thinking we were thinking we were unhappy is what we were thinking but we were you thinking know you're making a change and i think it was the wrong time this was yes it's all about informed decisions ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and how to make them was was that was the change that you were seeking indicative of anything that was leading up to the point where the band dis disbanded? I don't know that they were related at that point. No. I think there was just sort of a, a wear and tear on all of us emotionally from, you know, at this point we'd been a and band physically. for many yeah. years, um, and we had been kind of on this, um, what do you call it? Good. The thing that so goes round and round and you can't get off. <laughs> yeah, wheel. I mean, we we're just rat hadn't wheel. really truly had a break. <laughs> and we we were sort of caught up in, in the work and, and having to be 10 places at once and, right. and all of that stuff. And I think there was just kind of a weariness that set in. And 
you know, we've learned a lot about communication mm -hmm. and, and how to take care of each other. In those days, I think we were just sort of focusing on how to take care of ourselves because we were just in that mode, you know. Right. We, we also didn't know down. how to say no. We didn't know how to say no, so we were, how we were to say overtired. No. <laughs> what do you mean? No to what? What do you think? No you to say? opportunities. Yeah. No to everything. And and obviously, you know, opportunities have to be looked at carefully and weighed carefully. But really, we took uh, not everything that came our way, but we did so much work, and obviously, it paid off. And and there's no regret there. But yeah. but now with this coming together again, we're being very careful, very judicious, very selective about what we do and do not do mm -hmm. because we have. Yeah full and balanced and wonderful lives. We have many other things that are going on, and uh, and yet we love the Bengals. It's very precious to us, and we don't want anything um, to hurt it. Right, right. Well, not to belabor the point, but if you could, if you could uh, narrow it down to one reason why there was the split back then, what You're would You're belaboring. He wants the real deal. I, am <laughs> I would say Not to belaboring, but I will. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not able to communicate. Yeah, not able to communicate. Not, yeah. a, not able to communicate and, not, and, and knowing. And just the exhaustion and the yeah. burnout. It's mm -hmm. just like it with little intense. kids, you know, when they get cranky, usually mm -hmm. it's because they're tired and, and hungry. And maybe hungry. Burned and out and. Whatever, you know, so it's like. Running around all day. That, <laughs> that was sort of the situation we, we had kind of. There was just a lot of wear and tear that had gone on, and not not an ability between us to know how to talk to each other we didn't and know how help, to sort of e help each other. Ranks, right. yeah. So and we just sort other. of went off into our corners, and you know, were anxious. You know, was there a sense of permanence to it? To the at, to the, at the, time, at the time there yes. was, but it, so soon after, it just felt like, wow, that was the heat of the moment, mm -hmm. and for it, you. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah I Even think though so. it's, it's it's funny how things turned around because you know I just think that it was painful for all of us in in different ways. So there were elements of regret involved after. I don't think anybody went away from it going, ah, oh, I feel great yeah. now. You yeah. know, yeah. I think everybody <laughs> walked away great. going, I that away really going. hurts. God, what went wrong? I walked away it's going. I'm going to go sleep for four months. <laughs> yeah. To try to catch up on everything. You know, did it right. work? <laughs> no, it didn't work at all. Damn. <laughs> um, there must have been offers through the years, though, to, for you guys to get back together. Sure. What, what kept you from doing it up until now? This wasn't quite the it right time. Right. It wasn't the right time. It had to be for the right time and the right reasons. Mm -hmm. I think we time. all felt that it had to be all of us. Right. You that know, if, if two people were kind of ready to go but two weren't, then it wasn't right yet. And it wasn't until everybody said, you know, this is this is this the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Vicky, I've I've heard or I've read that you at first were the most resistant to the reunion. Between Michael and, and I, it's sort of a it's a, it's a, it's a toss. But yeah, <laughs> I think she actually ultimately came on board a little bit sooner. But God bless you. Well, how come <laughs> you, you, were the, you were the one no, that was calling me up. I don't know. She was officially not. She was officially because not Because I was here committing. and doing it. Officially not official. She didn't tell us that. <laughs> I didn't that. have the emotional <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so yeah, you were holding out on I was holding out. Exactly. She's it was an emotional Vicky commitment that came. <laughs> like she was just thinking that she wasn't in there yet. Yeah. Well, then no, I was here, but I wasn't, you know, <laughs> I wasn't married yet. We all had moments yet. where we were thinking, well, maybe I'm still not doing this yet. So. <laughs> uh, I think we did, yeah. There was moments of uncertainty. You know, yeah. everybody, uh, everything was feeling good, and it was moving forward, and it felt like it was going to come together, but there was some point where it just yeah, became obvious that this is going to happen it just gelled slowly over literally yeah. i would say two years, years. Mm -hmm. we took baby literally steps literally two years right because you were you guys had song you, i know there was a song on the austin powers mm -hmm. 2 soundtrack mm -hmm. and that was a couple of years ago already yeah, so exactly but you were working with and you still are working with the continental kind of drifters. drifters did that yeah. have any uh impact on your your hesitation since oh, you had that creative outlet absolutely already? i'm blessed yeah. to no, have like she's that busy already yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, th I actually do feel blessed that I have that outlet because the Continental Drifters is so important in my life and, and something I absolutely continue to do and be involved in. Um, so my job now is to figure out how I'm going to be able to do both and, and you know, be able to, to give um, to both projects. I think it's, I mean, there's just talented people in yeah. In both areas, so I'm lucky She's there too. She's cloning herself. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? It's going to be very challenging, <laughs> though, so for good. you to, to divide up your time that way. I know, but they do—they're two very different things, mm -hmm. and they're very different worlds musically and and in so many other ways. And so, it's kind of a nice way to, to feed two different parts of your life. Right. You know? And and one of the sort of prere prerequisites was that um, 
you know, in coming back together, we had to, everyone had to be comfortable. So it's like, right. some of us are parents, some of us live in different parts of the country and have extended family and friends and stuff, and nobody has to give up anything precious to them. Right. It's like, we will not be going on endless tours and not be with our families, or Vicky doesn't have to give up the drifters, <laughs> or whatever it may be, that is the, like, that's not going to change. You know, we're going to really accommodate people's lives. God help us. Well, <laughs> Here we well, go. Nancy, ride, the, ride, the, ride the ride. Ride the ride. Ride the ride, exactly. Um, let me ask you the, the flip side to something I asked earlier. What, if you could narrow it down to one reason as to why Bengals are getting back together, what would it be? What's the one reason for, for each me, of you? For yeah. me, it's like coming home. I, I was out there. I've, my, this was my first band, really for mm -hmm. real band, I mean, I had little projects, but this was the first band I was ever really in that played and made records and did shows. And I, I just, I've done, I've played with amazing musicians and I've been blessed to have a chance to work with many great people. But when I'm with these girls, I almost said these guys, <laughs> so when I'm guys? with these girls, I feel like, oh, I'm <clears> home. <throat> I know what, I know where I am. I know what I'm doing. Know I doing? know who they are. I love them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I feel like I'm in this very familiar world that I like to be in. Michael, what about Big you? Big happy face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you that damn happy face. I know. Get me that. It <laughs> had a little. Uh, well, I needed, to, I needed to really be assured that, that this wasn't going to be like a rehashing greatest hits house mm -hmm. payment tour kind of thing, that yucky thing that so many bands mm -hmm. do. The reunion. Yeah. Cause, you know, I, I had to really... Uh, uh, know that that this is like a new beginning for us, you know, new songs, new albums, you know, right. and uh, just to continue sort of where we left off. Right, it wasn't about reliving the past, it was about mo moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, I mean, we're blessed to have all these hit songs that we can play, and we're, we're going to play them, <laughs> yes, play yes. you know, but, and, but, you know, we're also moving ahead with it, so. Right. Mm. What about for you, Debbie? Well, I think it was, we had like 10 years span of you know, time to do different things, have have our get different lives together. I think that was really good reflection in time and just be able to live our lives and, and come back down to earth again mm -hmm. and just realize what it's all what the important things are. Mm -hmm. right. And I think um, just it was the right time for us to get together and start working and the fact that we've been writing songs together so well and it's been the creative flow has been so good. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good sign that um, there's a lot of positive feelings going on here. And for you, Vicky? I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> um, I sort of, um, this is where the reluctance <laughs> came in. I think it took me a while to sort of re-remember what it was that I loved about the Bengals because there was so much hurt at the end. So what I did is start thinking about the beginning and what was this band like in 1981? What were we like in 1982? Um, that's what brought me back. I missed writing with Susanna as a main songwriting mm -hmm. partner. I was looking forward to the opportunity of writing with Michael and Debbie, which we did sporadically, but not that much throughout our years. That's what brought me in. Okay, let's go back and write and see what happens. See what we get. And um, after some process and some, you know, manipulations and some time and some goofy songs um, <laughs> that you'll never hear, um, we have some wonderful songs. songs. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what that's what clicked it for me. That was the first step, though, right? When Susanna, you and and Vicky, Debbie, yeah. Or Debbie was yeah. was was uh, you guys were started writing together yeah. again, right? And yeah. Vicky too. Yeah, Vicky um, came in and started working as a threesome there. Yeah. Were those songs always going to be Bangles songs? Yeah. You know, yeah. well, there was a point where we weren't really sure, though. But yeah, I mean, there was some songs you want. I was still planning oh, to make true. a solo record that's true. that I've that's completely right. That's right. yeah. not lost interest in. But this is what I'm focused on. And, and it seemed like, you know, we didn't know. We were just we, we, were just we really went into it with a very open mind. Mm -hmm. But my idea was it just seemed to be going towards bangles, 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 <laughs> all the way. How was that first moment when you all four got back into a room together like this and played again for the first time in, I guess, what, it had been like 10 years? Yeah. The Austin Paris recording. Yeah. yeah. I, I, right, I, that, it yeah. was amazing. I mean, it was just, it was like fun. putting your foot in a comfortable shoe again. It's like yeah. a worn-out <laughs> shoe. It was, was kind of odd. Right. I, 
I was in a really weird space because my mom had passed away the month before, so I was still kind of just like kind of reeling from that. So I remember I was just like kind of laying on the couch, <laughs> like, here I am with the, the Bengals. Where am I? What year is But I, I think it was probably the first time that, I mean, <laughs> you were really having fun. I think that, I mean, I don't know, that was my point of view, that you were laughing and we were all telling these old jokes that we'd it's funny rehashing the from the, back, just the yeah. funny old, like, sort of shorthand that we all had. Mm -hmm. Weird names jokes. for each other and things. And so there was no nervous energy at all. You know, about it was nervous at again. first. Yeah. Just how was, was Michael like going to feel? Yeah, it was exci but excitement. Yeah, almost. It, it was. It was really, really a, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It was. And what about that first stage performance when you were when you did the George Martin uh, tribute? How was yeah. that? Was that? Was that? And th did that? Was there any? Were there nerves involved in that, or were you sure. guys ready? We were like nervous because we were playing we were at the Hollywood Bowl, and, we and so George, George Martin was Martin standing, standing right Beatles there. Songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there I mean, were like two and a half amazing. rehearsals. Oh, and he yeah. kept changing. Oh, he kept changing. Changing, changing what, what songs we were, we were singing, what and we were doing we were them in, what the arrangement was. <laughs> and there were all these incredible guest musicians uh, there, so everybody was like on edge. And but it was a great opportunity, and, and again, the perfect thing of all the offers that had come to us that, that year that we started talking about performing again, many, many ridiculous offers, mm -hmm. and that was the only one that we all said, we're there, we're doing it. What was it. the most ridiculous offer? I'm going to take over this. Please do. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh we, well, we should, probably shouldn't say. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we, we just, oh, just teasing. like, you know, guest shots on TV shows that none of us watch. Or uh, <laughs> you know, tours, really 80, 80 packaging tours, you know, mm. that, that's sort of like... Ladies of the 80s, oh back again. Oh, you know, uh, that sort of, I just that's made that up. That'd be pretty, pretty good. Somebody should use bad that. Bad news. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that sort of thing. We have no interest. And you, you mentioned a little, a little bit ago that you wanted, what you wanted was to get back to that special place that the Bengals had yeah. years ago. Are you there? Yeah. Back on the strip. Oh, yeah. You're that's what we're saying. Back on the strip. <laughs> Absolutely. You have that's, it now? That's why we're doing a club tour uh, mm -hmm. as well, because we want to do, um, you know, smaller venues where we can roots. see them they can see us we can you know stop in the middle of a song go whoa <laughs> whoops do it again <laughs> you know or whatever we need to do to just make it happen and because it's just the music and it's not showbiz it's mm -hmm. just you know yeah. we're just gonna play the songs what's what's been the most surprising thing about writing together again and performing again together has anything been yeah, like performing? We'll have to let you know. This, is, this hasn't really started yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is really the first time we've actually done real gigs in like 11 years. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's a big deal. It is. Yeah. Um, and how is the recording coming along? I know you guys have ha you you. I've read that there's like over 30 songs <laughs> written, and you have to Something narrow like it down. That. How is the? Have you started recording That's already? Kind of Not officially. Process. Yeah. Not we, officially. We've been making sort of sketches. Mm -hmm. And we're in the definite um, sort of what we call song abortion, <laughs> which is very oh, sad. But lovely. It's lovely. very sad, well, but thank it's you true. Um, we try not to think of it that way because there are many other lives and many other ways and many other places for little songs to live. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> which we'll find good homes for them and the ones that we don't actually record. And so we're sort of in that process and just, just getting rolling. What, 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 is, uh, what, in, what do you guys entail in, in deciding what songs are going to make it to this new album. Do you have a criteria established? Mm. Quality, it's man. Just we quality. have two or three quality. different criteria <laughs> that kind of all have to be have working at the same time. Right. So it's, you know. I mean, we want some sort of balance and variety and of, of moods and vibes mm -hmm. and you know, singers. We want everybody There's to four have singers their voice. in the band. So yeah. we want everyone to feel like when they listen to the album that some really important piece of them is is represented right. and you know what i mean right. it's got to be kind of <clears throat> i don't know do you, do you think when people walk away from listening to a bangles record do they have a sense of the type of people that you are or is your writing a little more removed from mm. your personal life it sort of depends on the song, question. i think i think it depends on some songs are all more personal mm -hmm. than others some songs are more narrative and uh, other songs are very close to your heart right yeah i mean also a, a band is a blend of personalities yeah. so i'm not quite sure what our band personality is. <laughs> i know but it's a fifth it's definitely really a fifth personality, personality. Yeah, me neither. can you can you put words to it i mean can you can describe i can i tell it? Yeah. So how i know I, well i bet you know I, I remember as a kid you know when you become a yeah. fan of a band right you listen to this song and you're like oh my you god i know, you know exactly them. what she's thinking about yeah, when she yeah. says <laughs> that Sure. And I, but obviously, but the really, I don't, I don't think, I don't think you do reveal 
yourselves that much. You do in not, a And I'm not way, saying you specifically, yeah. I'm saying songwriters well, I, in general. Yeah. It depends, and, and I think with the Bangles, because we are four strong personalities, I think we do tend to mostly blend into a fifth, that, that amorphous that fifth personality. Element, yeah. um, we'll the have to name element. her, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Guinevere. And um, <laughs> Gwen and Josie. I. <laughs> and um, Gwen. so it's, it's, Gwen. it's interesting because I tend to write very personal songs and sometimes they don't fit as bangle songs mm. because I think maybe they're a little too individualistic and, and uh, you know, sometimes, I mean, that happens when you're writing for different groups of people and, right. and... Can you tell right away, after you finish writing a song, that, eh, this is not going to be you, a If you don't song. know right away, you know it after the first time you play it for everybody. Scratch that. Moving on. I've definitely, I've definitely experienced that where I've written songs recently and I just thought, not sure it's a Bangles yeah. song. It's hard it to know. It could be, but I know what you mean. It has a kind of a something about it i don't know mm -hmm. what exactly well, there's definitely a quality to a bangle song I mean, yeah you, I, I think it's undeniable i mean the ones that lend themselves one. to harmonies are always yeah shoe ins mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's mm -hmm. like that could be really we could really do something with that right what's uh what would you say is the biggest misconception about the bangles that's probably mm. several probably that we were <laughs> one of the many um sort of male created uh right. this may be a phobia of mine not even a mi misconception <laughs> but no. but that we were sort of a male created put together you know girl group <laughs> don't and, play their instruments you know mm. that yeah or we don't play our own instruments or that sort of thing i know that that sort of plagued us in the early days um because we use additional musicians on our records right like Everybody, Everybody else, <laughs> uh, like all boy bands do, yep. but for some reason um, we would get the finger pointed at yeah. us more often because of that. Exactly. Right. You know, we're musicians. You know, we're not the best musicians in the world. I'm, I'll speak for myself. I'm not the best musician in the world, <laughs> but um, but we're good and we're a good band. So you know. Very true. Very true. Is, there, so is everyone in agreement with that particular <laughs> oh, so. misconception? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your thank day and talking you. to us here at House of Blues. We, we appreciate it very much. And good luck thank with you. everything. We all can't wait to We're hear the new stuff. We're excited about these shows. And, uh, and to hear and to play these shows. Very There's good. So and then they're coming up very quickly. Yeah. You guys ready? Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, we got to go rehearse now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, very good. we do. <laughs> Actually, we do. Perfect. We really do. Well, we'll wrap it up right now.